Yes, indeed. We are now in a fry, on a milk Monday morning, Monday morning, and the rain's coming down. And this this is the guts of summer. Pat, are we going to see the sunshine before the end of the year, end of the uh, the holidays? Do you remember that um, fabulous period we had in sort of uh, end of May and June? Oh yeah. You know, uh, they're they're saying we were in that El Nino phase. Uh, I think El Nino's reversed now, and we're in this El Nino two phase, and we we just get the same sort of weather every day. It's like Groundhog Day, but now every day the sun shines for about an hour, and then in comes cloud and rain. Isn't it ironic, you know, that uh, when the we can see as plain as day that the temperatures around the world are rocketing, and to the point where yeah. people are afraid to go on holidays. Here we are stuck with bloody rain and complaining about it. Uh, Maybe we've a little bit complaining about it. Me, they're, they're, yeah, then there's Jude. There's a thing on RT there. Just ten minutes before you were, we came on air. Uh, a woman in Greece. They're talking about forty-eight degrees and and uh, I think oh. around uh, Athens. Ah, but she's saying as well. And she says, uh, I think Athens must have about five million people. And she's saying the temperatures bouncing off the footpaths can hit seventy, eighty degrees. She says it's so serious. You know? uh, well, listen, Pat. Tell me this. Two, two, two things. One, uh, do you think the governments are doing enough or anything? And two, are we doing, are we as individuals doing enough or anything? Well, to answer your first uh, part, the government, definitely, definitely not. Are they Absolutely crazy? not. Are they when crazy? You, hold on, remember, remember the Americans, uh, what do you call it? George Bush pull, uh, pulled out of one of the environmental agreements. I can't remember the name of it now. And Trump refused to sign the next one. He said because it would st uh, stunt America's economic growth. Uh, mm -hmm. These restrictive, you know, and did, and then the other thing they give all these excuses to China and and and, the, and saying they're you know developing economies and they need to be doing these sorts of things. So they're allowing them to bu uh, build these uh, you no know, huge um, electric uh, you know generator things and some of these. Uh, I can't even remember the bloody name of the things. I'm having a senior moment here, but they're they're budget. They're just building these things, and they're spewing out, you know, uh, uh, um, carbon and whatever else that is destroying this planet. And nobody seems willing to take it on. Jude, hey. the, 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 there was a wee girl on the other day, and it wasn't Greta Thunberg. Says this this place is on fire, and literally it is now yeah, in certain parts of the world. It seems to me crazy, actually. Like. If you if you ask people what's the big item on the agenda that worries you politically, some people will say, "Oh, climate crisis," but few will say it. Not that many. Uh, and actually, you know, we really are screwing up the world. <laughs> it's kind yeah. of insane. I think all governments around the world should come together, make a pact, and say, "We're going to go flat out to try to save the planet." Because if they don't do that, I mean, everything else is superfluous, right? All yeah. the things about yeah. states and invasions and armaments and peace and uh, hospitals and schools and so on. It's quite beside the point. I just cannot believe that uh, those who run countries are so blind to what is happening. And they keep on just doing it. How come there isn't... Yeah. I mean, we have a Green Party. How come we aren't all voting for Green? No. It's, it's, I think, you know, there's a certain thing in the human in the human nature. That you plant, it's not our problem. Planted down. There's a dude, uh, you just reminded me something. There's a wee girl on, uh, I think it was RT last week. Michal Martin was giving a talk somewhere and she interrupted him. And in the middle of the thing, she started crying. She, she had meant so much here. She says, What are you people leaving us? And dude, if you're a wee girl, 11 or 12 or 13, or a young teenager, and you start thinking down uh, the path and you think, if you're really attuned and you know what's coming down the track, you're going to be very scared for your own future and for your children's future Jude, what are we, what are we leaving our kids or you know our grandkids you know, what sort of i have grandkids what, what sort of world are they the time they're my age what sort of world will they be living in yeah they won't be living that's the answer i mean if it, if it continues at the present pace they won't reach your age uh the world will be consumed i think um the other yeah. thing is just a small thing and they always say try to be the future that you'd like to have well, I, I, there are certain things we should be doing. Like I see in a local, on a local basis, for example, I see a guy going along with a cutting machine that will trim the sides of the hedges along the road. Now, I can get by with 99% of the hedges along the road. They can grow as high yeah. as they want to. I cannot, and the same with the grass verges, I cannot help but believe that that has some impact on 
the insect population, which in turn, you know, has other effects. In other words, this these guys are doing things and being paid for by the local councils to do stuff that's contrary to what we want to achieve in terms of global uh, warming. Yeah, yeah, there's no doubt about it. Dude, uh, what's your people are putting on, on concrete now in their front to ah, their cars, you know, throwing them grass. Time. All the time. Yeah, and all that's happening time. all of it. And it, dude, that's affecting even things like runoff for water. Then we're getting floods and stuff like that. Dude, there were, you know, we had in the Republic, we had a building boom for about 20 years hmm. and they built in floodplains and all the rest of it. And then there's Galway, uh, big cities like Cork and Galway and Limerick, there was regular flooding and so on. Still directly due to human activity. Okay, I, I just will leave this, I will just issue a challenge to both our viewers. And that is, what are you going to do today to help avert disaster? Okay, uh, there's a challenge uh, for you. Please don't ask me what I'm uh, going to do. Okay, let me go on to right. something closer to home. PSNI and Pride. The Pride Parade uh, featured last year, I gather, uh, a contingent from the PSNI and maybe the Garda Shiohana too, I'm not sure. They now have been told they're not to appear in uniforms. Um, now, good, bad? Is that a, would you see that as a progressive step that the PSNI says, oh, no more cops in uniforms on the Pride Parade? No, dude, I'm, I'm not sure. Like, dude, I, I, it's a very simple thing. I hold the view that the police force are supposed to represent all sections of the community, yeah. not one. And we, we have had living proof of what, in our little state, as you call it, you mm -hmm. know, where things can go so wrong because the police represent only one. Yeah. Jude, here, here, my view is this. See consenting adults. If you're harming nobody uh, and you're over the age of consent, you, you love your life. And as long as you're harming no one, your your private sexuality, your uh, whatever is your affair, not anything to do with me. So, and I think any society, any civilized society, should take on board that there's all sorts of different, you know, people of mm. color, people of uh, sexuality, people of whatever else, ethnic, ethnicity, and whatever, and sort of try and reflect it so that, that everybody feels they've got a stake in society. Yeah. And I, I think that's, I, I think that's a civilized way to live. I, I would agree with that in general terms, but I think when we come down to this question of the Pride Parade. I actually think it's a, a distraction. I think it's a deliberate distraction away from things like the economy. Wait, 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 you saying that? Wait, you I think it's that? because they don't, the the um, the government would facilitate this because they see it as getting our attention away from things like what states the economy in, what about our schools, what about our hospitals, what about open sectarianism like 12th bonfires, what about people being killed on the road, what about people not being able to afford a house, those are big, serious issues. The Pride Parade yeah. is simply that, a parade of colour. And yeah. to that extent, it's not something to get excited about. The second thing I want to say is this with regard to the PSNI in it. Why do we need to know that they're PSNI people? All that matters really is if they think that Pride's a good idea, well, they can march along with everybody else. There are lots of people. Yeah, but isn't it, isn't it, but is, is it not, isn't it, can't they march as the same as everybody else, but they're not allowed to wear the uniform, isn't that it? Ah oh, well, I mean, I mean, there's there's nothing to identify the bus drivers on the Pride Parade. There's nothing to identify teachers on the Pride Parade. Nothing to identify journalists. No, but, no, but you know, I, I, no, I'm open to correction. This is it not the case that they said they're not saying if you're a police person you can't walk in the parade. It's just you can't walk in your uniform. Aye, but my point is that uh, nobody's the teachers, journalists, GAA, bus drivers, etc. They all walk in the parade, but they don't do it dressed up. As it was oh, I get you now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I, 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 get I think yeah, that's yeah, the way it yeah. should be. I just think it looks. I just a bit bloody daft to select one group of people. PSNI and I. The PSNI is such a the police is such a tricky, you know, bag of tricks that I think if you can take them out of the equation, much better. Focus on whether you believe a pride parade is a good thing or a bad thing, and then let those who want to join it join it. Those who don't want to join it not join it. I think this thing of identifying subgroups within the Pride Parade is dangerous, and it's dangerous particularly yeah. involving the PSNA. Um, anyway, having said that, I know that some people will, will immediately conclude, oh, listen, he won't have allowed the cops to march wearing the uniform. He must be anti-gay. Do you think is that the kind yeah. of reaction some people have? Well, of course it is. Uh, they, I, 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 
Well, let's be honest there. People will always look for, you know, an ulterior motive. You, mm -hmm. you, you, could, you could say something straight down the middle, but somebody else will, will put an interpretation on it, which is not what you meant. So we all know that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Second, second I'd let him, and then we'll go on to some of the more uh, substantive ones. Were you watching the game yesterday, Derry versus Kerry? Oh, I, I watched a, a bit of it, actually. You know, I, I had a go yesterday afternoon, but poor Derry. Ah, oh, sad, 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 sad. They really put up a hell of a good show. But you know what I was thinking? You know the fierce loyalties we have? You you are a Donegal man. And I'm yeah. sort of a Donegal I, man too. Uh, <laughs> I was born there. Uh, Although I'm really from Tyrone. On the other hand, I spent town. Uh, <laughs> so I'm Derry, Tyrone, <laughs> Tyrone, Donegal. Uh, the thing is, where did the counties come from? Counties were invented by an English king, King John, in the 13th century. Uh, and we, yeah. oddly, we, especially a nationalist group like the GAA, we cling to our county loyalties how many centuries later. It does seem a bit odd, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. But you know, there, there's a, 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 when you look here in Donegal, there's a one thing, any shown as part <laughs> of Donegal, and yeah. I am saying anybody with a brain, and by the way, the people of any shown are fiercely proud of being from Donegal. Yeah. But if you if you work about my dear missus is from a place called Karen Dunna. And when she was growing up, she was never in Letter Kenny in her life. Mm -hmm. But she was in Derry, I'd say uh, two or three times a week. And that, that's any shown. The natural hunterland for any shown. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know this, as you said, the geographic boundaries were designed by some English king. They're not like letter quite lit. And I sometimes think um, Derry is the, uh, in a strange way the capital of Donegal. Yeah. But anyway, that's a side issue. I, I, in ways, you know, it would be worth, if the government wanted to do something interesting, they should look at, you know, what are the natural units as distinct from yeah. the, you know, King John's units or the people who followed him as well uh, and decide that those... Dude, like I, 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 you could have pushed you for a second. Am, uh, am I right in this? That every diocese, every Catholic diocese in Ireland, even the ones, there's a strip of land that allows them to go out to the sea. Is that right? Ah. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't think I don't think so, Pat. I'm not sure. I mean, that's the that's the short sure answer. I'm not sure. Uh, like, uh, say, Derry Diocese. Does that uh, does that take any sure show? Any show? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, some and some around it. But uh, have you ever got and look at uh, Leitrim? There, there's a wee strip that comes right into Donegal and goes uh, out to the sea. Uh, but you know, uh, so uh, but anyway, that's but diocese don't. Uh, Pat, 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 that, yeah, I agree. I mean, you're probably right. But I mean, dioceses don't really matter anymore. Because the church doesn't matter no. anymore. Anyway, the thing is this: when I was watching that game yesterday, I really, I really was emotionally involved in it, and yeah. I felt really down in the dumps when Derry lost. Uh, and yeah. I mean, thousands, tens of thousands of people were watching. Tens of thousands of people were there on the occasion. You know, a, a huge amount of emotion was spent. The two yeah. teams in training were training. They said to the ultimate degree. To be as athletic yeah. as skillful and so on, huge physical and emotional and team effort, and you know I was thinking, wonderful though it is, isn't it kind of uh, like bread and circuses? You know, it's an entertainment, and yeah. then when it's over, that's it. Uh, yeah. If you think about schools, you know, kids study for their leaving cert or their GCSE or their A level, work A like level, hell yeah. for years on end. They do a, write a paper, and then the papers are read, marked, and thrown away. I, I just yeah. somehow feel maybe it's stupid, but tell me if you shared it all. Wouldn't some? Is there not a way some of that great energy and effort could be channeled into something that would help society or would uh, progress something or another? It just seems to me it's like running your energy and all your efforts over a cliff after you finish. Yeah. Yeah, there's an element to it, not just. But then I remember uh, one time uh, in, in my other life when I was editor of the Dairy Journal, I remember we had to get a paper finished early one day. Mm. And we got it finished really early. Now, everybody, had, as far as I remember, didn't go for their dinner breaks or the tea breaks and so on. But anyway, one of the senior people in the place came to me and said, Hey, Pat, why can't we do that every day? And there was a, a guy called, I'll, I'll name him, a fellow called Joe Martin. He says, Pat, you, you can run a marathon once, you can't run a marathon every day. <laughs> you know, and and like that was a very very good observation. Yeah, you know, yeah. You, you, listen, you know, you know, you can put on a lot of. I presume a lot of those guys 
I, I know from a, a, I remember the stories about the Donegal team when, uh, what do you call him, uh, the guy from Kelly Beggs was in charge. Yeah. Uh, the the, the um Anyway, uh, what, I can't, his name's got out of my head as well. Jim, Jimmy anyway, Sinclair. Bottom line, it was, they used to run up and down sides of mountains. They used to, uh, Jim McGuinness, they, uh, they used to run up and down sides of mountains. They used to do, climb sand hills and all. And apparently, they, uh, and I remember there was a guy from Cork went over, he got injured and he went over to Manchester United for treatment. Uh, there was a famous physio there. They yeah. did uh, various tests on him and he was the fittest person in, uh, in the group. He was so uh, he was so fit and they couldn't believe an amateur player was so fit. But these guys, you know, they were doing all sorts of training, like soccer players to do a specific kind of training. Mm. But these boys were doing it all. But you imagine all those uh, dairy guys, the amount of effort they put on, and it's funny, you know, it just one match. Yeah. I mean, there's uh, no all that effort will be sort of set aside. It's like sort of somebody retiring from a job. Uh, you know, it yeah. doesn't matter what they wear. Uh, I, I was just thinking as you spoke there, though, you talked about the effort was put in in one occasion, a marathon, to put together the paper and get it out. Yeah. Uh, now, you know, and to some extent, people would say, oh, well, that's the nature of journalism. You put this effort in and 24 hours later, you know, it could be lighting uh, the bird's sure. cage or whatever. But actually, uh, whatever. actually, Pat, if you put in, if your team put in that effort and the paper wasn't published, yeah. You know, you would say, well, yeah. what the hell's going on here? You're asking us to sweat our guts out and not have something sh at the end of it? Because, yeah. you know, obviously newspapers do serve a serious function in society. And that's exactly what I'm yeah. talking about. It'd be really, I don't know, maybe somebody smarter than me could think of a way that uh, the effort that the dairy team and the Kerry team put into it could somehow be used to help. Maybe it'd be help. I don't know. Would it, would it help with... Yeah. Uh, maybe they could work on the idea of mentoring or you know helping people with yeah. drugs problems you know and uh, be more open, be more yeah. vocal these heroes be more vocal yeah. in society about different issues. We saw a bit of that with Man United, didn't we? With that guy, their forward who was um, you know making the case for free school meals. I think there should be much yeah. much more of that because it's it seems yeah. wrong somehow. That was that was Mar Marcus Rashford. Yes, Marcus he got himself Rashford. into a hell of a lot of uh, you know what he was doing was a very honourable and decent thing. Had to be a lot of Tories for interfering in politics. Oh, I, uh, do you thought, think was many, do you think were many the people idea of feeding hungry children was political? <laughs> do you think many people were persuaded by the Tory argument? Not at all. No, Hi, no, well, I'm... there you are. You see, I think more people thought Rashford did a bloody good job, or at least his heart Absolutely. was in the right place, uh, which is more than you can yeah. say for the, for the uh, Tory party. Okay, uh, you, you have quite a number of things, Pat, that you listed. Uh, do you want to pick one of them and uh, let's have a chat about it? No, I was sat yesterday and, uh, you know, the way I had to go out for, in fact, I was out for a good while, but I came back in. I was sitting last night and I read Jim Allister's speech. <laughs> and he's basically, uh, here's the thing. Sam McBride said there quite recently that it's now become a, pro a real problem for the DUP. He says they want to get back in and they know they need to get back in for unionism mm. uh, because drift is not, uh, drift is not the, fav uh, the friend of unionism. But Jim Allister is saying that if unionism, uh, royalism or the DUP goes back into discernment with the protocol, they are participating in their own self-destruction. So right, you there. There's catch twenty two, whatever way you come at it. So it's a major, major issue. And right here, Jude, it's a simple thing. If Starmont doesn't return, it's it's almost a uh, given that the two governments will coll uh, collude, and it'll be uh, more and further down the track. So that is not good for you. Towards so, United Ireland, here's you the mean? thing. Yeah, United Ireland. Uh, yeah. Well, the, the thing is that they're saying that the um, Starmont should return to, uh, in September. My question was, what happens if Stormont doesn't return in September? What then? Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think if they don't come back, there's going to be bad news. Um, I think Alistair, uh, he, he appears not to care very much about the impact of a non-executive, no executive on health, education, God knows what, all the services that people need. He, he doesn't seem to care about that. What he's putting at the top mm. is this notion of Northern Ireland being nudged out of the union on the, as they say, on the window ledge of the union. Yeah. The thing is this, yeah. I think he's right. So yeah, I'm caught in a yeah. terrible dilemma. I think they should get back 
and to, uh, the executive should be up and running and helping people. That's what they're elected for. But on the other hand, if they don't, as you say, uh, that kind of drift will lead to eventually to the two governments, uh, the South of Ireland and the British government, working more closely and hastening the day of United Ireland. Uh, but as uh, Jim Allister makes a point, uh, if they go back in, they're allowing themselves to be treated differently from the rest of the UK, which is hastening. The day. Maybe all roads, you know, all roads used to lead to Rome, they said. All roads in this case look like they're leading to United Ireland or a border pole, at least. And now, you know, I, I can see you're right about Alistair. Alistair doesn't seem to give a monkey's about the uh, growing <laughs> problems in regards to yeah. uh, waiting lists, uh, about poverty, about uh, education. And uh, what now? The Northern Ireland waiting lists are the worst in Europe. And by the way, the other thing there, the last day, even the pay raises that are, have been offered to the uh, doctors and nurses and public servants in England will not be available to uh, workers in Northern Ireland who are already way behind. You know, so it'd be, it'd been, uh, being a citizen of Northern Ireland has no great economic shakes these days. But you know, the, the, the big thing about this, uh, if there's no government back in Stormont, the, the the reality is we're going to kick into a whole new level, and that's that's a fact. Uh, Sam McBride's point was that um, uh, uh, this uh, if there's no storm and coming back, uh, 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 the reality is Westminster have voted by, for the protocol. They're not going to be renegotiated. There you can really see that they're pissed off. And as someone said to me there yesterday when she was sending off uh, her program yesterday for the season, Laura Kinsberg said, "Yes, this is uh you know we're having difficulties in Scotland." Difficulties in Wales and difficulties at Westminster, and she never mentioned the fourth <laughs> leg of the stool. You know, it's, it's that, that the fact that they were supposed to be uh, there's no government in Northern Ireland. Never mentioned Northern Ireland at all. So that's, that's right. how much Northern Ireland weighs on the uh, brain cells of the uh, the elite in London. Yeah, that's true. I've I've noticed that on many occasions where they they'll rhyme off Scotland, Wales, and England, and then sort of forget about Northern Ireland. But I suppose they see this as being an odd case, a different case as from the rest of the UK. And the fact is, we are different. And poor Jim, God bless him, he's trying to tell himself and tell the rest of us that we're not different from anywhere else. You know, the old, uh, as British yeah. as Finchley thing. Um, you were talking there about uh, being able to, people survive and, uh, you know, have decent money coming in and be able to live their lives in a hospitals available and so on. But you also had an item packed on people's pay. Uh, yeah. From what you say, it's getting out of hand. Just could you run us that past us? Right. You know, I heard Beckett, he's a United Union guy. And I was saw that the last day, uh, he said, uh, and uh, the British government, the whole line from Sunak and um, the, the, uh, what do you call the Chancellor, whose name also, excuse me, uh, he said he's saying the last day that these, uh, if they go ahead with these wage rises for the public sector and others, that they're going to fuel inflation, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And Howard Beckett came back and said, let's get a couple of things clear here. The guy, Simon Roberts, he's the chief executive of Sainsbury's. He's on almost four million a year bonuses on top of his salary, and his salary is apparently about a million. He is on something like £2,298 per hour. That's how his salary works out. The set, the the average worker on, on the floor in Sainsbury's earns eleven pound an hour. Now let's let me repeat that. The chief executive officer is earning two thousand two hundred ninety eight pound an hour, and his workers are earning eleven pound an hour. And you, you know, and you know, Beckett said it's the greed of the 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 bosses that is fueling uh, uh, inflation, and. If you were a junior doctor or a nurse or a cop, what would you accept a five or six pound a week pay increase increase when you know these guys are, you know, you're not even getting the crumbs. These guys are getting the whole cake. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and w the thing is, we've been taught to see bosses, the people at the top, as being awfully talented, awfully smart. <laughs> And then we couldn't do it. You know, I heard guys on the radio earlier today talking about the need to bring in private managers in to run the NHS. Yes. Uh, we've been taught this notion that these guys at the top are awfully smart. No, they're not. They're not necessarily all that smart. So they're, probably they're, good at their, they're probably good at their, at their job. But so are everybody. Most people are good at their job. Otherwise, they wouldn't have it. 
so what we're down to is this old, difficult, difficult question. What do we, what criteria do we use to judge how much a man or a woman should be paid? Uh, mm -hmm. Is it ability? How do you measure that? Is it the length of training they have to do before they can start the job? Uh, how do you measure that? If there's no answer, um, you know, should we not be saying everybody gets paid the same? It's a very difficult one. Um, I'll tell you the truth, and I don't know, I'm sure it wouldn't work in the real world, but I find it very difficult to argue the case that a cleaner in a hospital is any less important than the surgeon who performs operations. Hmm. No, 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 well, no, I can't accept You're that. supposed to throw up your hands and say, God, that's smart. Uh, no, no, <laughs> I accept that the, the, the cleaner is very important. But you, I presume the surgeon could do the cleaner's job, but the cleaner couldn't do the surgeon's job. But the surgeon wouldn't do the cleaner's job. No, no, but that's not the point. Hey, dude, uh, if, if, if I said, uh, hey, uh, the cleaner gone and do the neurosurgery and that guy in there, uh, he or she couldn't do it. But if mm -hmm. I, I presume if I said to the surgeon, hey, go and clean, I know, get him up and clean around that bed, I presume he could do that or she could do that. Oh, well, that's, so, that's a good like, point. That's a good point. But yeah. on the other hand, if the uh, look at look at it like this, if the surgeon downed tools and didn't do his job, a lot of people would die, right? Yeah. If the cleaner stopped doing his or her job, a lot of people would die. They're all necessary. Yeah. They're all necessary. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm, oh, I'm not disputing that, you know. But sure, that's the whole capitalist system. It's uh, admitted what what your contribution is worth. And it, uh, nobody says that, uh, that people at the bottom are treated anywhere near fairly. Jude, what does it say now that uh, the, uh, uh, the, the 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 factor in the uh, pay scale is uh, the bosses earn 365 times what the workers earn now? You know, uh, that, that's, you know, Jude, that was years ago when there was, uh, it was a much fairer society in America and then uh, when the, during the baby boomer generation, apparently uh, the bosses earned it between 10 and 12 times what the workers earned, and that was considered a very good wage for a boss. Mm. Now these guys are getting three and four uh, million a year for, you know, being a boss. You know, uh, when the workers are getting maybe 20 or 30,000. Nobody, uh, interesting thing, Pat, the conversation we've just had, you know, about whether people should uh, earn as much money as each other, or at least be very close to earning the same amount of money because they're all equally vital to the running of a hospital or a school or whatever it may be. Uh, very rarely do you hear that debated on TV or very so, rarly do you see an article on it in the newspapers. Yeah, and Jude, that's a very point. The, 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 the Tory government has uh, uh, spends all its time Saying that the green and you know people like Mike Lynch, you know the keep you know the yes. union guy, yes. pointing it out all the time, and you know that the what uh, if you uh, um if you get the mail and the Telegraph, lo uh, loony lefty unionists, trade unionists uh, demand um they will bankrupt us, uh, uh, hardline you know unionists, no uh, trade unionists, there. Well, sort of stuff. And, and, and basically, they're, what they're saying is anybody that fights for a good and decent wage is, you know, uh, uh, almost traitorous, and that you know, uh, you know, you've got to accept this for the good of the country. Meantime, they never say that the inequality uh, and in society is actually creating real tension. That mm -hmm. the big boys are getting looked after, all, uh, right, left, and center, and they, they're, they're, they're. Dude, why should I or you accept a, a ten pound a week pay increase? When you know the boss up the road, who's a complete, uh, often a complete nincompoop, is getting 10, 12 times that each week, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. You notice that any time pay increases are given, leave aside the thing of inflation, of course, but any time wage increases are given to any group in society, it's always a percentage. Always a percentage, which means the guy at the bottom, the guy earning least, will get the least increase actual yeah. money in his hand. Yeah. The guy at the top earning most will get the most money well, get the most, in his yeah. increase. Yeah. Isn't, it, isn't that outrageous? Yeah. Rather than to say, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to give you know £5,000 or £10,000 a year extra to the, everybody. Uh, that's the sum that's going to go. But uh, it doesn't seem to work that way. Uh, the guy, what is it, earn a, a, a thousand uh, uh, 
A thousand a year, he gets uh, 10%. He, he gets a hundred pounds increase. <laughs> the boy at the top of his earning a million and 10%, he gets a hundred thousand increase. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, it's a bit crazy, a bit crazy. Pat, I think we'll have to start a revolution. That's it. It seems to be the only answer. But before the revolution, we'll have to discuss briefly Sky News and the BBC. I see where Sky, my wife was telling me Sky News, Sophie, whatever her name is, and Sky Rich. News Rich. is going to be starting a, a news program at seven o'clock every weekday for an hour. Now, yeah. why do you think they're choosing that time? I'm not going to clue. Char Channel 4. Channel 4's yeah. news runs from seven to eight. Um, just well, about Channel every Four's weekday. news as, as yeah. the best news on British TV. That's exactly Channel right. News by so the idea mile. is Sky to push in on that and see can they maybe introduce... Uh, a different kind of program or get a program that more people will watch or have more stuff about the Queen's birth. See, the, 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 the BBC is not my most favourite of organisations, but there is something to be said for it. On the other hand, they let themselves down again and again. Only this morning, I was listening to, channel, to Radio 4, you know, the, the flagship yeah. news programme. And what I hear... A voice sings solemnly, today is Her Majesty the Queen's birthday. And then you hear roll of drums and God save her. Uh, this is on a news programme. The Queen is yeah. dead. And they're, you know, doing this sort of dance of loyalty to the Queen. It doesn't make sense. And when a crisis occurs, the BBC tends to go along with the big establishment. It's part of the establishment. And yet, yeah. it's like it's a bit like Labour and the Tories. Uh, uh, Labour isn't quite as bad as the Tories, but they're not far behind them. The BBC isn't quite as bad as Sky, uh, which is owned by Murdoch, so it <laughs> can't possibly be good. But they're not far behind them. Uh, you know, they, there is a yeah. te tendency to be stodgy and, and play safe and, and uh, you know, keep lefties off the thing for uh, at all costs. Yeah. So uh, Tony Blair was on Sky yesterday. He was actually on Sophie Ridge's program. And he said it's about time the BBC is to stop uh, kowtowing to government. And he said it's time they stood up for themselves a wee bit. Uh, you know, and it was in the wake of the Hugh Edwards thing. Uh, you know, I, I think BBC bosses, you know, remember the Gary Lineker thing? Dude, that was the most ridiculous. Gary Lineker, uh, you know, as I said earlier, it seems to be now that if you present yourself as standing up for the poor, that's political. Gary Lineker basically sort of said, hey, we're in regard to both people. You know, the very least we should do is try to be decent and fair. You know, that's all he basically said. Marcus Rashford sort of said, poor kids who haven't any enough to eat. Uh, you know, uh, he started a campaign to get them fed during the summer. There's Tory people having a go at this. And the, and despite the fact that the Tory government are in power, in power for more than a decade, they have this idea that they're getting a fair, unfair deal from the BBC, that it's a nest of lefties. Jesus, dude, that is good for a laugh. <laughs> you know, uh, Tim Davey and people like that who are former Conservatives, yeah. you don't know yeah. what these people yeah. actually want, dude. I think it's like they want to go back to sort of like Russia and have Pravda, just to the sort of the, uh, that the official state broadcaster is nothing more than a uh, a part of the party, you know, and that, that Speaking, seems to be the way. Speaking of comparisons with Pravda, during the Troubles, what sort of a job do you think the BBC did in reporting the Troubles? Not a particularly good one, Jude. You know, there's an odd... Uh, why do you, why do you uh, say that, Pat? Because, you, to use your term, they ref, uh, reflected the part of the establishment. They reflected the role of the British Army being the good guys fighting the the, the, the mad bigots on the Protestant side and the mad rebels on the, on the Catholic side. And, 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 and the days were the good guys and they were holding the middle ground. They didn't say that the, uh, the British Army rubbed their eyeballs with loyalism. That they were basically upholding the rule uh, of unionism, that uh, that they were up to their eyeballs and and nefarious deals, including murder. You know that was never. But by the way, one of the Dumblebee guys said way back in the early seventies, and uh, it might have been Richard rather than, or it might have been Jonathan rather than Richard. Try. Right? He said once our boys became involved, we were expected to row in behind our boys. So the they uh, the, 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 uh, the impartiality. And you know, honest reporting without the wonder. When our boys were engaged, we were supposed to report they were the good guys. Oh yeah, well I I remember. I'm sure you remember too the Falklands slash Malvinas, uh, the BBC, uh, 
and all the liberal newspapers like the Guardian, they yeah. all swung right behind our boys. Uh, there was no question yeah. that they were going out there to fight the good fight. Uh, maybe, maybe if we're in their shoes, we'd be have a similar view. Maybe if you were British, maybe if you were living in England, if I was living in yeah. England, maybe we'd take it the same way. But the fact of the matter is, they were not an impartial. On the one hand, on the other hand, a balanced uh, um, news organization. What do you think of the BBC now? Leave aside their news delivery. What do you think of their programmes that they produce as opposed to programmes that are produced on other channels? Uh, Jude, you know, someone, I have to admit, see something that's, the BBC does drama better than anybody else I've ever seen. See when you know it's a good, me and my missus usually sit down on Sunday night and watch. And now we sat, last night we started watching you know, this one, that programme about Kim Fulby. It's, it's a spy amongst friends or a friend among spies. I can't even remember which way. I started watching that last night. But usually the BBC, Judy, you said uh, this last couple of years, usually on a Sunday night particularly, there's some great dramas and uh, they are excellent. I don't think anybody does it better. Mm -hmm. And Jude, sometimes, you know, their news is usually fairly good. Now, it's not the greatest, but it's, you know, uh, no, I can't, I can't have a go at the BBC because I think it's, they're not brilliant, but they're the best of a bad lot and on many levels. Well, let, let me uh, have a go at them instead. Then uh, yeah. I think I think that the, their news isn't bad, but I think that the Channel Four news is far far better. I think Absolutely. they really delve into an issue, and it's a joy to watch, and it's not boring either. It's you know entertain, yeah. entertaining in the broadest possible sense. Uh, the other thing is, I there was a time when I would switch on the TV, and I would know immediately without checking the channels that I was watching BBC. No longer yeah. so. Uh, I mean, yeah. I switch on and I'm certain, I, I don't even think it's through. I assume I'm watching ITV. And then, oh God, this is yeah. BBC. I mean, Dancing on Ice, is it? Or, or Strictly Come Dancing? Uh, stuff like that. Love I, Island I, or... I, I, various the Celebrity things. Big Brother or what yeah. do you call it? The Great Buddies Bake Off. Yeah. Uh, you don't know they're, which... They're literally the, the same guy. kind of programmes. I mean, they should be doing yeah. something. They're supposed to entertain, educate and inform. I think they inform still. I think they, to some extent, educate and to some extent they entertain, but it's not as good as it should be. Really, I do think the standards no. have slipped in terms of programming. Another thing, of course, is you've talked about these costume dramas. ITV has done some good costume dramas as well. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, much, so yeah. you know, it's not exclusive to them. However, there's only about 30 seconds left, Pat. What do you want to tell the huddled masses before we leave them? There must be some message. Hey, Judy, money tell, uh, uh, a message I have from Brexit has been a great success for the Brits. And a, a quick, here's a quick version. A young fella I know, Scottish, uh, quick, quick, quick. Uh, was over was over in uh, um, what do you call it? Spain. Spent two hours uh, trying to get through on a UK passport, Irish passport straight through. So Brexit <laughs> has been a one hell of a great deal for Britain. And it's not just it doesn't stop with passports. Okay, Pat. Thank you very All much. Right. Okay. All the best, dude. All the best, Pat. Good luck to you.